Hi, this video is just to show how the D3 handles naming conventions of content files. I've set up a quick tutorial here or a quick a demo on how I render After Effects files out to D3. And I just wanted to see the folder structure and I wanted to also to see, show you how I render Notch LC files out for D3. So here we go. So you can see on the left-hand side here, we have we have our D3 screen. Right now it has a, it's just a standard 1080p file. You can see his name screen A. And down here I have one layer. And this layer has a file called 001 Red Rock Ops title intro V1. So underscore V1. I'm gonna to go to this hard drive, this eight terabyte hard drive into my D3 projects folder. And this project is called file naming. Under objects, I have a video file and I'm gonna list these so we can see it. In here, I have two files. I have 001 underscore Red Rock Ops, RRO title intro V1 and I have outro. So that's two and they're both underscore V1. So just to show you where that shows up here, as I go into D3, as I hover, it tells me where it is, objects, video, and then the file name. There's another folder you would go deeper into the hierarchy. It also tells me the size, what data rate, frame rate, and the length. So it's four seconds and I have 120 frames. Now I can right click and I get more versioning info. If I go to this menu and I right click, I have how many versions I have. Right now I have one, one version, one revision. I haven't rendered the second version. I also have an intro. So let's go ahead and play this. There's an intro. And right now, if I go to the next, there's an outro, right? So I just have two files I'm referencing. And if I click on the actual file again, I have the same information. I have video. Video file, 002 RRO title, outro, underscore V1. That's my V1. If I right click there on the thumbnail, here's my V1. So what I'm gonna do is let's head over to After Effects and I've already pre-set up the comp. So let's say the client wanted to change the color of the background right now is this bright red, but it wants to be a little bit deeper red. So as I scroll through the project here, you can see that I've now created a kind of a fade up with a fill. It's not something that you would do. This is strictly for demonstration purposes. I also added a V2 on the corner here so that we see when the file is replaced automatically. And then as we go, we have changed the font size and the font. Now it went from a Times Roman. Now we're using just an Arial Black. And then now we have the outro. So now I've already put this in my render queue and I am going to go and set up the output type for this uh, render. Of course, you can set up a preset, but I'm showing you this here. So when you go output um, the, these files to D3, you know how to do them. It's fairly simple. In the best settings, we're going to leave all this intact. Under, sorry, output module, we're going to go into format. It's QuickTime Notch LC format, not just QuickTime. And under the format options, you have optimal, good, very good, excellent, optimal, best. We always keep it optimal. You can do your own tests with your own files if you want. For now, we're just going to use optimal for this particular example. If if this file had audio, we could render it with 48 kilohertz, 16-bit sampling, stereo would be fine. Uh, as the content guy says, we usually like to put this on screen C, or if there isn't a screen C, we just put it on the screen that we're rendering this uh, file into. Obviously, in this project, there's only screen A, so we would output to screen A with audio. But for this particular instance, we are not doing audio, so we'll turn that off. And then in the channels, if I wanted to turn this into an RGB plus alpha, I could do it here, but we don't have any alpha in here. So I'm just gonna go back to a standard RGB file. No resizing, no post render action. Uh, this is just a straight up file. And just to show you how D3 handles content replacement. I go okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and render and we're Notice we're hovering over, this is our V2 file here. You can see this is, this is the outro and we're in the outro file here. So I, I need to 
make sure that I name this correctly. So this is, this is where the actual magic happens as far as the replacement goes. All I'm going to do is I'm going to call this V2 right in this area, right here. And I'm going to save. And once I render, we're going to look over at D3. Once the file is done, boom, it replaced it. See how now it says RRO title outro and it's underscore V2, right? If I right click and I right click in this section, as you can see now, I have version one and version two. I can always turn off version two by just clicking left clicking here. But now D3 in that folder, there are two versions of that. There's version one and version two. And let's go ahead and do that for the intro. There we go. Let's go ahead and send this to render. And I'm going to do the same things that I did here. Again, I could have done a preset. I understand that. But this is just for show and tell purposes. So I'm going to turn the audio off. We're going to go to the format as QuickTime, Notch LC format. Format options is optimal. And as you can tell, the reason we use Notch LC is because it is a 10-bit format. So we like using that. We're not using an alpha, so we're going to leave it an RGB, pre-multiplied matted for colors and millions of colors for the depth. And then we're going to go OK. And then for the actual file, since this is the title in, it's just going to be a V2. I'll click here and just call it V2. Again, you probably have your process as a render artist, and it's much faster than mine. This is not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is just to show you how D3 replaces files. So I'm going to go ahead and save. The file is ready to save. Let me close these dialogues out. And then we're going to go back to, as you notice, it replaced that file at the split, which is the split of the, of the file here. The way I rendered it, I rendered the first and then the second. So as you can tell, this is still using V1 because if I right click, well, it, it tells you V1 underscored right here. If I want to go further, I can, I can tell there's only a V1 on this particular asset clip here. And this is an MOV. This is a, a Notch LC MOV. Um, when I right click on this thumbnail here, all of the information for this file comes up. How many frames, the resolution, the codec, bits per channel, right? 10 bits because we're not using HAP, we're using Notch LC. Be aware that D3 will see Notch LC, uh, will see HAP files and HAP Alpha, not HAP Q, but it will see HAP and HAP Alpha. Has Alpha, it knows it doesn't, doesn't have audio. Original FPS is 29.97, which is correct. Uh, duration is four seconds and the frame rate or bit rate, sorry, the bit rate is 2.6 megabytes per second. Okay. And you can also find the usage and you can lock the file so you don't delete it. There's some other parameters here, but I'm not going to go into those. I just want to show versioning right now. So there's a version and we're still on V1. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and go back to our render queue and go ahead and trigger that render. And the second D3 sees it. You can see that now it's V2 here, right? And now if I right click, you can see that now it shows you it shows you a representation of what the file looks like when it comes in. I can still turn off that V2, right? So I have those those two assets are in there now. So now that we replace V2, you can see that V2 is on the bottom and our font has changed. And as we go back to the beginning of the video, there is a fade to black, right? So let's go ahead and play this real quick. Let's go ahead and play it. Now it plays exactly like they wanted to, it stops. And then we do a cut frame to the next one. And it comes over now, be aware that this is the visualizer. So that's the reason you saw that jump on the output, it would be, it would be nice and steady. So once I load, I pre-cache this, let's see what happens. There you go, it's pre-cached now, so it just goes. If I go into my feeds, my feed render, and I go back, we can see that this didn't blink at all. This is the actual output. And even though I'm in a director, you're not going to see the output here, but you can see that D3 is trying to render the best possible output on the output frame. So we'll go back to our stage. This is just a really quick demonstration on how the automatic clip replacement occurs. Same thing happens with PNGs. If you render a PNG with a V2, it will 
automatically take over that next PNG. For example, if you rendered a client's name or anything that's in that PNG and you want to replace that because there's an error, you simply just drop that into the folder. The second D3 sees that there's an underscore V2 tag on there, it will take over the V1. So, and just to reiterate what that looks like over here, it's just a simple V1, underscore V1 to underscore V2. Same, same name convention all the way through to the V, and then it takes over on the V2 and it literally just replaces it. So I hope that shows you how D3 replaces files with versioning. Thank you.